Hi, today we will see the secret behind spectral shifts. Let us take the two structures. The first one is the ethene and second one is the 1,3-butadiene. The lambda max value of ethene and 1,3-butadiene are going to differ where ethene is going to have a lambda max of 175 nanometer and 1,3-butadiene is going to show lambda max at the 270 nanometer. That means in the 1,3-butadiene we can observe a bathochromic shift because of presence of an extra double bond. So this extra double bond results in an extended conjugation. And we know this fact that extended conjugation leads to the bathochromic shift. That's why 1,3-butadiene is having the more lambda max compared with the ethene. But how this extended conjugation leads to the bathochromic shift? So in order to understand the effect of the extended conjugation on the bathochromic shift, we have to discuss about the molecular orbitals. So here let us see the molecular orbitals of both ethene as well as 1,3-butadiene. So this is the structure of ethene and when we see the bonds present in the ethene, the carbon-carbon is having the single bonds and the pi bond is going to be formed by the overlap of the p orbitals. So when these atomic orbitals are going to overlap to form the pi orbitals, they can produce the molecular orbitals. And here ethene can form two molecular orbitals. So here this is the one of the molecular orbital which is indicated by psi1 which is having the less energy and more stability so it can be considered as a ground state. Similarly, ethene can also form another pi orbital which can be indicated by psi2 and it is having the high energy and not stable so it can be considered as a excited state. So whenever the ethene forms a molecular orbital, it can form the two types of molecular orbitals. One can be called as bonding molecular orbital and second one can be called as anti-bonding molecular orbital. So in a simple way, bonding molecular orbital is the ground state and anti-bonding molecular orbital is the excited state. Now if we see how these molecular orbitals are going to be formed by overlap of these p orbitals. So in this ethene, when these p orbitals are going to be overlapped, they can form one of this uh, configuration where you can observe that the in between the carbon and carbon, the p orbitals are going to be overlapped in a similar way such that the positive lobes are above and negative lobes are below the plane. So this overlapping of uh, atomic orbital produces a stable molecular orbital which is indicated as the pi molecular orbital. And similarly ethene can also form another molecular orbital where we can observe that the lobes of the p orbitals are going to be aligned in an opposite way so that this molecular orbital is less stable and it can be considered as the pi anti-bonding molecular orbital. So in this way whenever the ethene is going to form a molecular orbital it can form the pi bonding molecular orbital as well as pi anti-bonding molecular orbital. And under the resting conditions, the electrons will be present only in the bonding molecular orbital, which is a highly stable molecular orbital. So that's why this pi bonding molecular orbital can be considered as a HOMO, high energy occupied molecular orbital. And similarly, pi anti-bonding molecular orbital is uh, not stable. So it can be considered as LUMO, that is the low energy unoccupied molecular orbital. So normally electrons will not present on this pi anti-bonding molecular orbital so it is unoccupied. But when we supply the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation the electrons can jump from the pi bonding molecular orbital to the pi anti-bonding molecular orbital so that they can produce pi to pi transition. So in order to jump from this HOMO to LOMO the electrons require energy that's why they will absorb the electromagnetic radiation. Now let us take the case of 1,3-butadiene. Again if we see the bonds in the 1,3-butadiene, since here four atomic orbitals are going to be involved in the formation of two pi bonds, they will form four molecular orbitals. So when they are going to overlap, initially they can form two bonding molecular orbitals which can be indicated by psi1 as well as psi2. So these are somewhat stable and they can be considered as the ground state molecular orbitals or bonding molecular orbitals. And this overlap can also produce the other molecular orbitals which can be indicated as psi3 as well as psi4 which are nothing but the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. 
so under normal conditions the electrons are present in the ground states like the psi1 and psi2 but when we supply the energy the electron in the psi2 bonding molecular orbital can jump to the psi3 anti bonding molecular orbital thereby it can absorb the energy now because of extended conjugation we can also observe an increase in the molecular orbitals here you can observe two bonding molecular orbitals and two anti bonding molecular orbitals now if we see how these uh, molecular orbitals are going to be formed in the 1 3 butadiene first of all they can form a psi1 bonding molecular orbital where you can observe the the pi orbital cloud is uniformly distributed above and below the plane and this is the more stable configuration and this is indicated as a psi1 bonding molecular orbital similarly in the psi4 anti bonding molecular orbital again the lobes are going to be overlapped in such a way that the positive lobe is going to be overlap with the negative lobe so that this molecular orbital is uh, least stable which can be indicated as psi4 anti bonding molecular orbital in the psi2 bonding molecular orbital the two carbons are having the uniform distribution of the pi cloud and other two carbons are again having the uniform distribution of the pi cloud but in between the pi cloud is not going to be distributed and similarly we can also observe an another anti bonding molecular orbital which can be indicated like this so here you can observe that at the central carbons the pi cloud is uniformly distributed but at the terminals it is not overlap and this anti bonding molecular orbital is indicated as psi3 now under normal conditions the electrons are present on the psi2 bonding molecular orbital so it can be called as homo that is high energy occupied molecular orbital and psi3 is the vacant molecular orbital so it can be considered as the lumo so when we supply the energy the electrons can jump from the psi2 to the psi3 so that they will undergo pi2 pi transition now if we summarize so in the ethene we can observe the two molecular orbitals one is the bonding molecular orbital and and the other one is the anti bonding molecular orbital but in 13 butadiene we can observe four molecular orbitals and two of them are uh, bonding molecular orbitals and two are the anti bonding molecular orbitals so in case of ethene when we supply the energy the electrons can jump from the psi1 to the psi2 so that they will absorb the energy but in case of 13 butadiene because of the extended conjugation now the energy gap between the psi2 and psi3 is somewhat less and when we supply the energy the electrons can jump from the psi2 to psi3 so that they will absorb the energy so if we compare the energy absorbed in the ethene and 13 butadiene the energy absorbed by the 13 butadiene is somewhat less compared with the energy absorbed by the ethene since the energy gap is less 13 butadiene requires less energy for absorption thereby it shows the increased lambda max value as we know that the energy is inversely proportional to the lambda as the energy gap between the ground and excited state home and lumo is going to be reduced the lambda max value is going to be increased so in this way by extended conjugation 13 butadiene shows a bathochromic shift ethene is having a lambda max of 175 nanometer whereas 13 butadiene shows a lambda max of 270 nanometer the bathochromic shift here that was shown is because of the extended conjugation because of extended conjugation more number of molecular orbitals are going to be formed and the energy gap between these molecular orbitals is going to be reduced thereby lambda max value will be increased now if we see what makes these spectral shift like the bathochromic and hypsochromic shifts we can summarize the three factors extended conjugation and solvent as well as oxochrome all these can produce some spectral shifts so extended conjugation always produce the bathochromic shift and along with the bathochromic shift hyperchromism is also increased then what are the other factors second factor is the solvent and third factor is the oxochrome so let us go with the effect of the solvent the solvent can stabilize either ground state or excited state by its polarity so solvent may be either polar or non polar so the effect of the solvent depends on which type of solvent we are going to take and which type of transition the molecule is undergoing so here we can simply summarize that if the solvent is going to stabilize the excited state then it leads to the bathochromic shift because the energy gap between the homo and lumo is going to be reduced 
and thereby it can produce uh, hyperchromism, increased capacity of absorption. And this type of effect of the solvent on the lambda max is called as positive solvatochromism. So positive solvatochromism always increases the lambda max with increased capacity of, of absorption. Similarly, solvent can also stabilize this uh, ground state and when it is going to stabilize the ground state, the energy gap between the HOMA and LUMA is somewhat increased which results in the hypsochromic shift. So this hypsochromic shift always associated with the hypochromism. So here the solvent is not in a favor to the molecule. That's why this effect of the solvent is called as uh, negative solvatochromism. So positive solvatochromism is related with the bathochromic shift and negative solvatochromism is related with the hypsochromic shift. And another important factor is the effect of oxochrome. This is again uh, widely present in many of the molecules. So let us take an example of benzaldehyde. And if this benzaldehyde structure is going to be modified so that we are going to substitute a hydroxyl group at the para position, now this becomes uh, para hydroxy benzaldehyde. So here this hydroxyl group acts as an oxochrome. Oxochrome is a group which increases the absorption of the chromophore. Chromophore is the substance which is responsible for absorption of the electromagnetic radiation. And oxochrome is the group which is not actually responsible for absorption but it can increase the absorption of the chromophore. So here the chromophore is nothing but the benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde can absorb the electromagnetic radiation. But when this benzaldehyde is attached with the hydroxyl group, here the hydroxyl group is going to increase the absorption, so it acts as an oxochrome. Now if you see the energy states of the benzaldehyde like this, the HOMA and LUMO is like this. And if you take the case of parahydroxy benzaldehyde, you can observe a reduced energy gap. And if you compare these ground states, we can observe a very little change in the ground state because the parahydroxy benzaldehyde in the ground state is somewhat uh, similar to the benzaldehyde. But if you compare the excited states, we can observe a significant change in the excited state where the excited state is going to be stabilized by presence of a hydroxy group at the para position. Now this hydroxyl group acts as an oxochrome which increases the absorption by stabilizing the excited state of the benzaldehyde. So in this way, by presence of oxochrome, the energy gap may be reduced and reached to the bathochromic shift as well as hyperchromism. So that's about this spectral shifts. Spectral shifts results in the shift of the lambda max. The lambda max may be either increased or it may be decreased. And when the lambda max is increased, it is called as bathochromic shift and it is also called as red shift. Similarly, when the lambda max is reduced, it is called as hypsochromic shift and it is called as blue shift. Here you can easily remember that B is not for B. That means bathochromic shift is not the blue shift, it is the red shift. Similarly, hypsochromic shift is the blue shift. And bathochromic shift can be produced by stabilization of the ground state where the energy gap is going to be reduced, which results in the increase in the lambda max. And hypsochromic shift is mainly produced by stabilization of the ground state where the energy gap is increased and lambda max is decreased. And always bathochromic shift is associated with the hyperchromism that is increase in the molar absorptivity and hypsochromic shift is associated with the hypochromism that is decrease in the molar absorptivity. And these spectral shifts can be affected by either extended conjugation or by presence of an oxochrome or sometimes by the polarity of the solvent. But the effect of the solvent depends on the whether the solvent is polar or non-polar and whether the molecule is undergoing pi to pi transition or n to pi transition. So that's for today and if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching this video.